everyone. Today we are starting chapter five, um, which is going to focus on this thing called rectangular approximation methods. Basically what it is, is a way to figure out the area underneath a curve by approximating the area by using rectangles. So we're gonna see actually first an example of a uh, reason why we do this, and then we're gonna actually switch then to functions that we would do this for as well. Okay, so here's our kind of contrived example of somebody trying to figure out how far they drove to work, okay? So if you were a mathematician or someone who just likes to play with numbers, you would maybe calculate or look at your odometer basically and see, oh, every two seconds, I'm gonna calculate my speed. I'm gonna see what the speed is. And this is in notice speed per second here. So we're noticing that this person over 10 seconds, their speed went up but it didn't go up consistently. So it went up for six, then four, then eight, then six, then six again. So the speed is not consistent, which means we would need a, a process to figure out the total distance traveled. Let me remind you that distance is rate times time. So if you, a lot of times if you know your average rate, like 40 miles per hour and you traveled for one hour, then you would say you went 40 miles, right? But this isn't consistent here, so we're trying to figure out an exact distance we went. So here's how this is gonna work. <clears throat> Excuse me, so we're gonna start by making it very simple and looking at our first two rectangles. So first two intervals, um, first interval from zero to two. So again, we're gonna remember distance equals rate times time. So the time here, this time interval is two. And one way we could look at it is to say, oh, well, I, at time equals zero, I've measured the speed to be 30. So my rate would have been 30 and my time would have been two. And that means I would have traveled 60 feet. Okay, but that's using this lower value, the smaller value for the, the rate. <clears throat> what if instead I look at the same time interval of two, so here's the two, but instead of using the 30 at the initial starting time, we use the 36, that was the second measurement. So now our rate is 36 and our time is two, which means that with that estimate, you went 72 feet. So this creates two different types of estimates. It creates a lower estimate and an upper estimate. And we know we created the lower one by using the lower value and we created the upper estimate by using the larger value. In this case, it happens to be on the left side, and in this case, it ha the value happens to be on the right side. So we're gonna use this idea to do this problem twice. First, we're gonna create a lower estimate, and we're going to create, notice one, two, three, four, five rectangles. Then we're gonna do the upper estimate with five rectangles, but using the larger values, and then we'll make it a little more exact from there. Okay, so all of these have equal time intervals of two, so they're all going to be multiplied by two. So this one is 30 times two, 36 times two, 40 times two, 48 times two, and 54 times two. And notice that we're not using the 60 because that value is an upper value, so we're not using that. So you're going to multiply all these by two, or you could add all of the numbers, the 30, 36, 40, 48, and 54 together, and then multiply the whole thing by two. But either way, what you get when you add it all up is 416 feet. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing, but create rectangles starting on the other side of the picture. So we're going to, again, ignore this 0, 30 and instead create rectangles using the height on the right-hand side. So now my height of this right rectangle is 60, and then my next rectangle going to the left will be 54, 48, 40, and 36. So we used this side for each of the rectangles. So now it's 36 times 2, 40 times 2, 48 times 2, 54 times two, and then 60 times two. Add these all up, and the distance that was traveled was 476 feet. Okay, so then this question says, if you chose the lower estimate, which is 416 feet for your approximation, what is the maximum amount your approximation can differ from the exact amount? So remember, this is the lower, and I hope you recognized that the upper 
was 476. Both of these are approximations and they're both wrong. This one is too small and this one's too big. So what that means is if you subtract the two, you will get the maximum difference between your estimate and the actual distance. And this is a total of 60 feet. So at most, your estimate is off by 60 feet. That would be if you chose the lower and the upper was actually the correct estimate, which granted, we don't know exactly because we don't know what's happening at the times in the middle, but these are neither one of these are probably correct. Okay. So now what I did here is I added some more values in for you. So I want you to add these in here too. So I'm saying, what if instead of every two seconds, we check the odometer every one second to see what the speeds were. And again, the speeds are not consistently spaced apart. And if we were then to use these values for to create our lower and our upper estimates, what would those look like? So to do the lower, the way it will work is we'll start with 30, and we'll end with 57, oops, because we don't want to use the far right side. We don't want to use this upper value. We want to start with the lower and go to the, the second from the, the right, basically. Each of these intervals are equally spaced at one apart. So I'm multiplying each, these are like the heights, I'm multiplying each height by a width of one. I'm actually going to write the one out front and then add these numbers together. So it's 30 plus 32 plus 39. Oh, I forgot 36, sorry, plus 36, plus 39, plus 40, plus 44, plus 48, plus 51, plus 54, plus 57. And if you add all this up, I hope my calculation is correct because I got 429 feet. Okay, so now the upper is the same process as before. So now we're going to not use the 30, instead use the 32 as my first height and then the 60 as my last. last. So my upper estimate, and again, remember my widths, my time intervals are just one. I'm gonna start with 32, add all the numbers in the middle, and then end with 60. And I do believe this comes out to be 459 feet. And notice this is your lower and this is your upper. And if you were to subtract the two, the estimates are only off by 30 feet now. So just by getting a few more calculations, my, num my lower is higher, my upper is lower, and the estimate between the two, the, the possible error is only 30. So we're getting it closer together. Okay, so we're going to use this idea with a graph. So I'm using starting off with a basic function so that you can start to understand it. So we're going to start off with x squared, and we're going to do what's called this rectangular approximation method. And again, these are sometimes called, I think I spelled that wrong. Pretty sure I spelled that wrong. These are called Riemann sums. So sometimes the R in this formula is sometimes stands for the word Riemann, but usually we think of it as rectangular. So this is the left, sometimes called left hand, rectangular approximation method, meaning start on the left side and don't use the height on the right side. Um, you can create as many rectangles as you want, but I hope it, it makes sense that the more rectangles you have, the better your estimate. Okay, so if we're going to create two rectangles, I look at this, let's have this go from zero to four, since that's what's showing up on my graph here. So I'm going to create two rectangles out of zero to four. The widths are going to be two each. Okay, so now I need to figure out the heights. And for the left, my height should start at the left value. So we should start at zero for my height. And then my second one, the height will be at two. The two is a little bit easier to see, and I hope I can draw this well with this pen. Okay, so here's my rectangle starting at two is the height. On the left side, there actually is no rectangle because the height is zero. So what you're doing is saying, okay, the width is two. The height is going to come when I substitute zero into my function, and my function is x squared. 
my width is two for the second rectangle and my height comes from when I substitute two into my function. So this whole thing just becomes eight. Notice how much area is left over. This is clearly not a good approximation. All right, I'm gonna erase this and we are going to then do with four rectangles so you can see how this works. So four rectangles I'll do in red means that I'm gonna break it into one, two, three, four rectangles. So my first height will be at zero. So again, no rectangle here. And now my next height will start at one. So it goes like that. Then at two, only over to three. And then at three, over, ooh, sorry, to four. Ugh, not doing a good job drawing. All right, here we go. So my widths are all one. And again, you could factor that out front. Height is happening when you substitute zero in. Width, one. Height is happening when I substitute one in, then two in, then three in. You should only have, remember, four rectangles. So I have zero plus one plus four plus nine, which is 14, is the area, the approximate area under this curve. Again, a lot of empty space that hasn't been filled in, but it's a little bit better than the previous one. And if I did more rectangles, I would get closer, and more rectangles, and I would get closer. Okay, so now we're going to do what's called RAM. So RAM is when we start on the right side. So that means my rectangles are going to start with the larger or the right hand side. So again, if my domain is from zero to four, my rectangle will have, I'll have a rectangle at four, which means I'm kind of going backwards when I create them. Okay, so let's go ahead and create it backwards. And then as you move forward and understanding it, you don't have to go backwards. So two rectangles, my Rectangle I'm creating at four has to go all the way over to two. Ah, really bad rectangles. Oh my gosh, that's really bad. Okay, so my first rectangle, notice how far off it is there by a lot. All right, that's better. And then my second rectangle will have the height will actually be at two, so it'll be going over this way. So when I go to do my calculations, again, my width is two, and my rectangle that I'm creating is starting at a height, or at, over at two to get the height. So two squared here, and then a width of two, and my next height's coming from four. Four times two is eight, 16 times two is 32. This one gives me an estimate of 40. That's way over now as opposed to way under. So then let's create four rectangles and see what it looks like, okay? A better eraser here. Okay, so if I want to create four rectangles, again, that means each width of the rectangle is going to be one. And let's work at it from the left side, but still using the right rectangle so you can see how this works. So the height of my first rectangle would be at x equals one. And my second rectangle's height would be at x equals two. And my third rectangle is at x equals three. And the fourth rectangle is at x equals four. Okay, so same process. My widths are all one. Let me actually factor that out anyway, so we're not looking at it. And I'm doing one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus four squared. So this comes to one plus four plus nine plus 16. This is 25 and five, this is 30. Significantly smaller than the only two rectangles. All right, we're now gonna do the midpoint approximation method, which um, can be kind of tricky because you have to sometimes use fractions when we're doing this. Not for the two rectangles at least, but we will have to use fractions for the four rectangles. Okay, so two rectangles means their width is going to be two this way to get two out of this, and the height is going to occur at the midpoint between these two x values. So the height is, a gonna, is going to occur at one, for this first rectangle, and then the height will occur at three for the second rectangle. 
So the nice thing about this is you can see that there's some over here and some under. Some over, but then some under. So it shouldn't be horrible. So I'm going to factor out the width of 2. Then it's going to be 1 squared plus 3 squared, which is 9 plus 1 is 10 times 2 is 20. So this area is now 20. So here's where it gets a little tricky when we want to use four rectangles, at least for this one, is because we're going to have to use fractions. So my widths are one again, so that is nice. And then for each of these, the heights are going to occur in the midpoint between zero and one, one and two. So I'm going to write them over here. So my first height is going to occur at a half, half squared. My second height is going to occur at three halves. So three halves squared. My third height is going to occur at five halves. So five halves squared. And my last height is going to occur at seven halves squared. Okay, so I've got one fourth plus nine fourths plus twenty five fourths plus forty nine fourths. So when I add all that up, I end up with eighty four over four, which is twenty one. That's kind of interesting to me because four rectangles gave me an answer that's almost the same as two rectangles. And both of these are a better estimate, I think, than the original, well, the left and the right that we did because those had so much either over or under where this is a little bit of both. All right, I hope that made some sense, but we will go over this tomorrow at the beginning of class again. Please make sure that you are... Um, Writing down any questions you might have as you went along, go back and watch the video if you need to. See you tomorrow.